Hey, welcome back to Ingvid. Today we're going to be looking at the crucial skill of networking. Networking is so important for your social life and for your business life. Because if we're not meeting new people, then we're basically stagnant and we're not going to experience new things. So we always want to be looking at meeting new people. Obviously, we have to keep our existing friendships and existing uh, business going, but it's good to meet new people. So what we're going to be doing in this lesson is some different techniques for approaching and talking to someone you don't know, which can be quite scary, and some phrases that might help you uh, to do that as well. So I hope there's something here for you. Um, now, you've probably all experienced that fear moment where you're like, uh, I should probably go and speak to that person or someone here, but I don't really know how to do that. Uh, you know, it's a scary moment. So what we need to do when we are entering a room that we don't know anyone, say it's a networking event or a party, less formal uh, opportunity to meet people, but an opportunity nonetheless, what you need to do is to take in the room. And what I mean by that is have a sort of a bird's eye view, like of everyone there, who is going to be best to approach. And you might think of them as being on their own, in twos or in threes, or maybe even in a larger group. Now, if you go and speak to someone on their own, you might have a nice conversation, but then you're only meeting one person, and how, how are you going to sort of end that conversation and move on to the next person? You might get stuck with that person for a long time, especially if you don't know anyone there. And then you're like, Ugh, who do I go and speak to next? So, you know, it's an option, but it's better to be going and approaching a larger group because there are more opportunities, you know, so you, you can meet more people that way, obviously. It's important that you notice the body language. Yeah, if there are two or three people speaking, if they're all kind of closed in like this, then they don't, you can tell that they don't want anyone else to come in. But if they're, you know, if there's some open space and it shows that they're uh, unconsciously, subconsciously more available. conversation with an outsider. So notice the body language. Does it look like they want to talk to anyone? And also see how comfortable they are in their existing group. Are they two strangers who are finding each other's presence awkward and uncomfortable, in which case they want to move? In which case, that's not a good group for you to join because they're about to change. Like, are they enjoying each other's company? Is it a good moment to go and join? Um, you can also use the room as a prop. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, notice what is where. You know, if there are some drinks over there, you can go over and pour yourself a coffee or something else. Um, use the things that you can do in the space as opportunities to bump into people accidentally and start conversations. Oh, the food's over here. And then you notice someone's just speaking, oh, it looks really nice, this cake, doesn't it? Mm, yum, 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 yum. Yeah, delicious cake. So how do you know such and such a person? How come you're here today? Who, um, you know, you're just always starting these conversations. Um, one of my best friends that I met quite accidentally was he was trying to sell his motorbike in Barcelona and you know it was 
uh, happen to, to meet this guy and it's about keeping that sort of friendship going. So you take like something small and you find out that you, you know, you have a good rapport and you develop into a friendship. Um, next thing I knew, he was turning up for Christmas with his family. Um, right, so we have this rather intimidating situation of having to go up to the group. We've decided that it's better to be approaching a group of three. They look from their body language like they're not just wanting to speak on their own. So what do we do? Well, you could just walk up and say, um, sorry, I'm, uh, hi, sorry, I'm, now this is quite a sort of English approach. You're kind of apologizing that you're being so forward to go and talk to those people. You're introducing your name, you know, hi, I'm such and such. Okay. But you've got to keep that going. Don't just say, hi, I'm, yeah, find out about them. Who are they? How do they know? You know, work it all out. Be interested in them. It's not about you. It's you understanding who they are. Be interested. Don't try and be interesting. Um, okay, so some things that you could talk about. Obviously, it's going to change from uh, whatever the event is. But one approach is to sort of make observations. What can you see? What can you comment on? Um, fantastic party, isn't it? Well, what a great event this is. I thought um, such and such was an amazing speaker. Um, did you come to listen to that person? Um, if you're talking about kind of a birthday that's been laid out, lots of choice, isn't there? Wonderful food today. Um, but just try and keep a com You know, if you notice that the conversation dies, then you need to change it and talk about something else. Um, you might ask them about um, their, their plans with this event. Like, um, I'm thinking of a party that I went to in Barcelona where it started in, uh, in this apartment and then it went on to, um, to uh, a, a music venue. So you, if I was in that situation, I could have asked them, so are you going on to, to listen to the music later? Um, and then in that situation, you know, we're in a foreign country. Have you been living here long? How do you know? I've said that question quite a few times, but, you know, it's about finding the links, trying to find the similarities, what you have in common. Do you have friends in common? Do you know the same people? Um, do you do a similar job to that person? The more common ground you can find, the more likely it is that you're going to have um, uh, an enjoyable conversation. Um, you, we want to be looking to say things like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, because that shows that we're on the same sort of <coughs> same vibe. Yeah, yeah, us too, yeah. You know, showing that there are similarities. Hoping you're getting something from this lesson, and if so, I'd appreciate it if you could do something for me. You will know about that red button, the subscribe, but the share one is equally important. So a lot of work goes into these videos, and I only choose phrases that I think are going to be super useful for you guys. So if you could just do that small action of trying to grow this channel, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so we're thinking about um, social and business opportunities and getting in and networking and, um, you know, approaching a group, getting that conversation going. Um, it's really nice if you can actually introduce other people and make social connections for other people. Oh, you know what? Um, it'd be a really good idea if you spoke to my friends or I think you'd really get on well with such and such a person. Let me introduce you. Oh, Paul, come over here. Yeah, Sheila would be, she does exactly the same thing for you. You, you guys, you must talk. Um, or you must, Tracy, you must meet Tom. Come over here. Tom, Tom, this is Tracy. Tracy, Tom. Yeah, introduce people, get get the ball going. Um, now, if you're suggesting to 
stay in contact with someone, um, you might want to start with uh, let's stay in contact. Yeah, it would be great. To, let, let's stay in contact. Do you want to swap numbers? I've written it how how it said. Do you? Yeah, obviously it's about do you. Do you want to stay in contact? Do you want to swap numbers? How do I find you then? That does not mean that I'm going to be um, trying to find them on the metro. Where are you? No, 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 no. This is like, where do I find you in the world of social media? Yeah, are you on Instagram, Facebook? Um, be good to see you again. Yeah, we should. Proposal, what are you going to do? I don't know. Go rollerblading or uh, maybe if it's more business, we should do a business lunch sometime. We should do, I don't know, whatever's appropriate for you. Yeah. That would be great. Let's have some positivity. Um, if you do want to see that person again, if you don't, then you just say something nice and you don't mean it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> right. Um, if you feel that the conversation has gone on for a little bit too long and you want to say adios, um, you can say, like, well, it's been really nice to meet you. Um, and then if you have to go quite urgently, then this is the formal phrase. Sorry, do excuse me, I've just got to go and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's formal or slightly less formal. I'm so sorry, I'm going to have to go and uh, speak to such and such a person or I'm going to have to go and move the car. It's about to get a ticket. Golden rules. Put the focus out of your head over to them. Who are they? Get to know them, yeah? Find out about them. Listen. I don't just mean listen to the words. I mean, listen, absorb the body language as well. Are they in a hurry? Do they need to go and do something? Are they actually trying to talk to this person over here? Okay? <coughs> All I can say is go out there, try this stuff, and let me know how you get on. Yeah, let's have some it's not that easy networking show. Many skills need are needed.